talking going on this week. A lot of talking going on this week. And look, normally, I don't respond to individual things because as exists in this media world, people are going to have an opinion of what you say, what you do, one way or another. And to get fixated on one person's response is typically a pretty terrible route to go because all you're doing is diving in to something that doesn't need to be dove into. But AT Aliens, Coach Wood, they decided to. So I just hope he kept receipts because we are, in fact, diving in. First off, Woods must have one heck of an imagination because at no point this season have I ever said anything critical or negative about AT Aliens to say they can't be a good basketball team. In fact, if you remember back to any of our SimWorld stock updates, which we owe you some, a Royce Anderson has always been a prominent name that I have said I think can be really great, but they don't remember that. No, no, they don't remember that. They don't remember that at the beginning of the season, I thought Royce Anderson could be a top 15 player. They don't remember that. In fact, the most negative thing that I have said is that if you paid attention, I don't consider Royce Anderson to be a number one guy, and I stand by that. If you look at Royce Anderson's numbers as it compares to every other number one score on every other team in Simmerall Prep, that's 32 teams. Royce Anderson is 22nd among them in scoring and 25th in field goal percentage. Of the nine players that are leading their team in scoring but are averaging less points than him, only three have a worse field goal percentage than his 43.2%. So, He's one of the lowest scoring, scoring leaders, and one of the least efficient. Yeah, his last game against Southeast Select was awesome. 26 points, 52% shooting. But if he was doing that all season, do you think we'd be having this conversation? No. No, because for every good game, there's been two to three games like the one against Queen City Kings. 20 points, 22 shots, 31% shooting. Not great, Bob. Not great. Well, how about the team, right? We're talking about the player. Let's talk about the team. Look at their schedule. Their wins have come against teams with a combined record of 50 and 66. That's eight wins. Their six losses have come against teams with a combined record of 49 and 34. Six of their eight wins have come against, come against teams at or below 500, and four of their six losses have come against teams above 500, meaning they're beating mediocre to bad teams Losing to good teams. Dangerous. But hey, they're ranked top 10, number 8, according to the standings. They're 8-6 and six and ranked 8th. You're correct. Great. Congratulations. But there are three other teams that are also 8-6, and six, but happen to be, for whatever reason, ranked below them in the Powell rankings. That includes one team they've lost to, Bay Area Breakers, one team that they are yet to play coming up, Yacht Club, and a third team they're not going to play at all, Raining Trays. Meanwhile, Best Coast is 7-6, and six, and there are four other teams that are currently 500, either 7-7 seven and seven or 8-8. Eight and eight. So, with one loss and any of those teams grabbing a win or two, they could drop all the way to 19th. That's more of a proof point that looking at the overall ranking is absolutely foolish than it is to say AT Aliens isn't top 10. We've talked about the middle class in Simmerall Prep being massive. AT Aliens, right now, as we record this, it just happens to be at the top of that ledger. But to take that ranking and run with it is absolutely foolish. Because if they lose a few games, and I'm not suddenly going to say they're a bottom 10 team, because they aren't. But all of this underlines a long-running annoyance of mine. Players and coaches, it appear, have paper-thin skin. They are quick to call out their big games, demand respect, talk about how great they are. No one believed in them. But then they want to fight a bitch if someone say anything critical of them. Welcome to the fucking show. You want to play basketball to make the SWBA? Well, think about why does the SWBA exist? It's not because a bunch of people decide to get around and play basketball. It exists in its current form because people care about it. Because people care about it, the media covers it. Because of that, people will critique the players and the coaches. It's what we do. If you can't handle that, then none of this is for you. This isn't for propping one another up endlessly despite faults, despite failures. That's not why any of this exists. 
You can't have the glitz, the glamour, the attention of being in this league and then also have no one criticize you. It's not how it works. The only reason the league exists is in part because of the media. And that's not speaking as somebody who talks about this and wants to hype themselves up. If the media wasn't covering it and fans weren't going, it wouldn't be here. If you wanted that route, then this would be going the route of every other now-defunct sporting league in the world. And actually, you'd have no court to play on. If you can't understand that, then you have no idea how business works in this world. Attention means money. No attention means no money. No money means no league. So, ATLians, suck it up. I never said you sucked. I said your star player is in a number one option right now. And everything backs that statement up. I haven't been quote-unquote talking a lot because I have some vendetta against ATLians. You simply have been a vanilla, mediocre, run-of-the-mill team. And hey, maybe you turn it around. And if you do, I do the same thing I've been doing every single time I talk to you on a Monday. Recognize it and say something. Until you do that, we're not going to recognize it and say something.